Hi, my name is Marie and I'm a scroll and digitization conservator at the British Library. I'm going to share with you some key techniques for cleaning your collection items in preparation for digitization. This will also help to keep the digitization station clean. I will address how to work with items that have been affected by mold and red rot, as these are common problems you may experience when caring for your collections. The first thing to consider is how to prepare your workspace. Cover the surface with paper or plastic sheets that can be easily cleaned or thrown away. Make sure the table or surface is at a comfortable height whilst sitting or standing. Ensure the tools you need for cleaning are assembled. These include brushes, sponges and, if available, a manual air pump for delicate surfaces such as photographs. Dust and spores from collection items can be dangerous when inhaled, so wear a mask and apron or overalls. Wear gloves if you have broken skin or allergies, or if the item is very dirty. Make sure to have an ethanol and water solution, a hoover, brushes and bin bags available for cleaning. Please note that the ethanol and water solution is used only to clean surfaces and tools, never collection items. If you don't have a hoover available, use brushes and sponges in a ventilated space. When cleaning, wear full PPE. Start by cleaning the dirtiest part of the document first. If working on a book, clean the cover and edges before the pages inside. Using a soft brush, sweep the surface from the center to the edges gently. Keep the document steady with one hand to prevent tearing or creasing. Be gentle, as moldy materials tend to be more fragile and brittle. Cover the suction hole of the hoover with gauze by using an elastic band. This stops small fragments from entering the hoover. Use a fine mesh or gauze to protect the item whilst you hoover the surface. Be very gentle, adapt your tools and techniques depending on how fragile and damaged the documents are. A gentle patting with a sponge might be more appropriate on vulnerable areas of a document. If working with palm leaves, dust can be gently removed with a soft brush or sponge. Incised leaves can be cleaned with distilled water, but do not use water on inked or painted palm leaves. And when working with photographs, wear natrile or latex gloves to avoid leaving fingerprints. If the photograph is very dirty, use a very soft brush to lightly remove the dirt. Red rot is the result of the disintegration of leather over time. It stains surfaces and documents easily and will need to be contained as much as possible. Cover the surface where you are working with paper or plastic sheets that can be easily cleaned or thrown away before you begin to clean. When digitizing books affected by mold or red rot, start by photographing the book covers. Then clean the digitization station with water and ethanol solution or with disposable disinfectant wipes. At this point, the book cover should be overlaid with paper wrappers to stop the red rot from spreading to the text block once you begin cleaning and care. This should help to reduce the risk of staining and damage. Mold, fungi and spores are everywhere. In conditions with high temperatures and humidity, they can grow and spread very quickly. Mold can be dangerous for humans by causing allergic reactions and infections. Spores enter the body through inhalation and through small breaks in the skin. This is why it's very important to clean items thoroughly with the right equipment to protect anyone who comes into contact with it. Once you have identified the presence of mold, the item should be quarantined away from the rest of the collection items until you are ready to clean it. It should not be disturbed or touched. If you have touched the collection item, be sure to thoroughly wash your hands. Moldy items can be sealed in plastic bags and boxes to prevent further spread. To avoid moisture causing the mold to grow, 
add silica gel bags and wait a few days or weeks for the mold to dry out. It is best to store collection items in cold temperatures and in dry conditions to reduce the risk of mold growing and spreading. There are two kinds of mold to watch out for. Active mold. This is damp and smears when touched. It grows in furry clumps. This type of mold needs to be dried and cleaned. Inactive mold. This is dry and dusty and brushes off easily when touched. If this mold becomes damp or warm, it can grow and spread. Cleaning will reduce this risk by removing the spores. If anyone in your team has a pre-existing health condition, like asthma or heart disease, a weak immune system, or if they are pregnant or at risk in any way, they should avoid contact with moldy items. The longer you are exposed to mold, the more likely you may have an adverse reaction to it. For this reason, limit working with mold to three to four hours a day and no more than three days per week. If whilst working you feel unwell or experience unusual symptoms, stop work and seek medical advice where needed. Once the item has been cleaned, place it into a clean archival box. When you are finished, clean all of your tools and work surface with ethanol and water solution or antibacterial wipes. To decontaminate sponges and brushes, use ethanol and water solution in a bucket. Wash them thoroughly and leave them to dry completely in a ventilated space before using them again. To clean the hoover, detach the hose, run the ethanol and water solution through it and leave it to dry fully. Safely discard your PPE, which should not be reused. This tutorial is part of our online video series covering digitization, digital preservation and conservation for the Endangered Archives program. Please feel free to explore these resources at eap.bl.uk slash training videos.